This is the best moments of the Barbecue Central Show in 10 minutes or less. Ever wish you could re-listen to your favorite interview or segment? Do you enjoy hearing older shows for the first time in years? Then the best moments of the Barbecue Central Show in 10 minutes or less is just what you need. Thanks for listening and enjoy the show. Yes, indeed. Thanks so much for listening. I'm John Solberg, your host for the best moments of the Barbecue Central Show in 10 minutes or less. And I want to let you know today's episode is being brought to you by The Butcher Shop, purveyors of highly sought after 100% Australian non-crossbred Wailara 9 Plus Biscuits. And as always, they're going to be handpicked just for you. The Butcher Shop has been retailing the finest meats for the past 15 years. Every week, they're shipping out competition quality meats to many of the biggest teams in the competition team across the nation. Simply put, teams who use The Butcher Shop win, and they win often. If you're not a competitor, but you still have an eye for the finer cuts in life, great news. The Butcher Shop is shipping some of the finest prime, dry-aged Australian Wagyu and Japanese Wagyu steaks to people just like you and me who aspire to be the kings and queens of their cul-de-sac. The Butcher Shop always has Berkshire, Compart Duroc, Allegiance Duroc, and Prairie Fresh all-natural pork in stock. And again, it's always hand-picked for you. So let's review the best competition briskets. They got it. The best pork selection. They got it. Giving you better overall options to cook at home. They got it. So give the Butcher Shop a call today. 850-458-8782. That's 850-458-8782. You mentioned the Barbecue Central Show, and they're going to give you 10% off each and every time you make an order. You can also check out their Facebook page, facebook.com slash The Butcher Shop. Shop is spelled S-H-O-P-P-E. The Butcher Shop, home of the 100% Australian non-crossbred Wailara briskets. And in today's show, I'm going to get kind of freaky. I don't even know what to say about this. I don't even know if I should do this. I don't know if it's good or bad. Well, let's go find out. All right, welcome back. This portion of the show is being brought to you by GreenMountainGrills.com, manufacturers of some of the best pellet cookers out there on the market today. If you're looking for a big cooker to house a lot of food, they got one for you. Medium size, they got one there too. How about tailgate, compact? Yes, they have it. Also, pellets to fire those cookers as well. All you have to do is visit the website GreenMountainGrills.com. That's GreenMountainGrills.com. I love my Green Mountain Grill. You could love yours as well. Now, never let it be said that when I see or hear a great idea that I don't bring it on the show and let the Centralites evaluate for themselves, and it seems only too obvious, but do you know anyone who is currently making their own lump charcoal that's not in the lump charcoal making business? I do, and since it's a subject we haven't discussed here on this show ever, We need to rectify that situation right here and now. So let's go ahead and head over to the Smithfield Hotline and welcome first-timer to the show, John Solberg. John, how are you, buddy? Hey, great, Greg. Uh, So, John, I'm very interested. Do you have a camera on tonight by by chance? I I do, and it is on. It is? It is. Hold on a sec. I'll be the judge. Oh, okay. Sorry. hey oh. Ta-da. Yeah, I just uh, blew out my whole digital mixer here, and I didn't see the picture. That's why. I was hiding you from myself. Here we go. So give me background about Mr. Solberg. Are you a longtime live fire enthusiast? Is it something that you kind of got into later in life? Where's your venture into the live fire foray? Uh, I've played in live fire for a long time. Uh, Seriously, only for the last three or four years, um, I got into the... You know, back in the 90s, the open bottom water bullets, uh, about 1995, I fell into getting better, trying to get better at that. Uh, graduated into uh, Smoky Mountain in the early 2000s, and that's when it kind of took off. Can't really ever say I got good at it uh, for the last four or five years. John Solberg joining me here on the show. We're going to be talking about how to make your own lump charcoal. You know, there continues to be a great debate over charcoal. You have a couple different options. You have the briquette charcoal. You have the lump charcoal. Then you have these new ancillary things that are coming down, the coconut charcoal and all this other crap that I really don't see becoming a a, a real run as of, well, for now, I guess. So I certainly understand that you make your own lump, of course, but do you use both? Do you have certain times when you would use briquette or lump, or are you just the straight-up lump guy? I'll burn anything. To me, it's just a heat source. So if it's, you know, I'm, I'm a huge Kingsford fan. 
You can't beat its consistency. If I'm going to cook that counts, I'm going with Kingsford. Um, I do like lump charcoal. Of course, it's got its place. But I'll burn stubs. I'll burn uh, B&B. It's like I say, to me, it's a heat source, and I just want to play with all of them. How long have you been making your own lump charcoal? I think this is my second year of making it. So I've been a, a couple years now I've been at it. I had mentioned in the open that I think, you know, from time to time you might hear somebody talk about making their own. Or for me, it was probably over a decade ago when uh, a very famous inventor, Fred Perkle, uh, who did the Barbecue Guru, talked about maybe bringing something to market, but it never happened. So how do you hear, do you see a video? Are you reading an article and you're like, oh, yeah, of course I should be doing that. Well, it all started when I stumbled across Amazing Ribs, the Zen of Charcoal. And uh, there were some great links to some videos of talked about the colliers of Pennsylvania who went out into the woods and made mountains of charcoal to smelt iron with before the coal industry. And it just kind of developed from there. And so I was very interested in that. But you're like, well, that doesn't make sense. That's not practical. Um, but then the conversation keeps coming up about... Uh, you know, my charcoal is better. Your charcoal is better. This is the best charcoal. I found bricks in my charcoal. So I started to get like, <laughs> all right, what is what is good charcoal? And how do I have an intelligent conversation about making charcoal or lump charcoal? So I started digging into it. There's a ton of information out there about making biochar. So there's a lot of people making charcoal for different reasons other than cooking. Uh, even over at Naked Wiz, there's a great page about making lump charcoal in your backyard. So just kind of those combination of things led me to where I am today. All right, so let's delve into the process here. Um, maybe equipment, and obviously I have a host of pictures here that we can kind of run through as well that you sent over to me that lists uh, or, or kind of shows uh, what you're using, and then we can to get into process and stuff. So as far as what you need to buy or, or maybe you have it around the house and you didn't know you had it, uh, what's the best way to kind of get started here? See, I told you, it's kind of weird. But do you want to know what I think is the best way to get started? You head on over to the BBQCentralShow.com. Link in today's show notes. It's going to take you to this complete episode. Go find out what I think. You also have some questions. You want to make your own lump charcoal? You can always reach out to me, John, J-O-N, John, at the BBQCentralShow.com. So that's it for today's show. Hope you enjoyed it. And until next time on the best moments of the Barbecue Central Show in 10 minutes or less, I'm your host, John Solberg. And now get you some barrels, get you some wood, and get yourself outside and make some lump charcoal.